Hello, everyone. Let's graph some exponential functions. Let's talk graphing. What do we got here? So first thing, if a is greater than 0 and b is greater than 1, remember, it's a times b to the x. So a is greater than 0. That just means you're starting with some amount of stuff that's not negative. Um, and b is greater than 1. If it's greater than 1, then that means this is exponential growth. If your b value is greater than 1, it's exponential growth. If it's between 0 and 1, then we call that exponential decay. And the b value can be called the growth or decay factor. Um, I've seen this go both ways. Let me give you an example. Sometimes people will say that 8% is the growth factor, and sometimes people will say that 1.08 is the growth factor. It, it doesn't make a difference here. If we talk about the B value, either of those makes sense to me. Um, I'm just going to say that the B value is the growth factor for the, ex the purpose of these exercises. So growth or decay. Uh, this is less than 1. Decay. This is 3 to the x. Growth. I'll just use G and D. Uh, bigger than 1. 5 thirds. Growth. 0.8. Less than 1. Decay. 5. Bigger than 1. Growth. 3 halves. Bigger than 1. Growth. Cool. Uh, okay, for an exponential function, the asymptote will be the x-axis. The domain will be all real numbers. It goes forever to the left and forever to the right. And the range will be whatever the asymptote is up to infinity. And those are both parentheses because it doesn't actually hit the asymptote. Well, yeah. Uh, asymptote for the other thing, this is the same thing. Negative infinity to infinity, and the range is still also 0 to infinity. Cool. So we're going to actually graph these things, and that's where we need to land. Um, I'm not going to use a calculator because I think we can probably do these without one. And on the back, the whole goal is that we do this without a calculator. So let's try it, see if we can plug in some values. We have x's and y's. Let's do uh, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3. Let's try those, see if those fit. Negative 1. So 2 times 2 to the negative first. Remember, 2 to the negative first is 2 to the first in the bottom. So that would be 1. 2 times 2 to the 0 power is 2 times 1. That would be 2. Now, hopefully you realize we're just doubling it every time. So once I've done the first two, it's going to be 4, 8, 16, because you're just doubling the y values. That's what this is telling you. You figure out where to start. You start at 2, and then you start doubling. Let's plug one in to make sure. 2 times 2 to the third is 2 times 8. Oh, yeah, that's 16. Cool. So when I draw this, negative 1's at 1, 0's at 2, 1's at 4, 3's at 8, or, or 2's at 8, rather. Um, and then it's going to be asymptotic, so it's going to look like this. Ah, kind of missed that guy. All right. Same thing here. X, Y. Let's start with, we'll do negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3. See how that goes. Uh, 4 times 1 half to the negative first is the same as 1 half to the negative first is 2 over 1, so that would be 8. 4 times 1 half to the 0 power is 4 times 1. That would be 4. Oh, I see the pattern. It's cutting it in half. 8, 4, 2, 1, 1 half. You're just cutting it in half over and over again. So negative 1 is at 8. 0 is at 4. 1 is at 2. 2 is at 1. 3 is at 1 half. Yep. Asymptote as well, but like that. So it goes like that. Pretty good. Pretty good. All right, now we're going to do some translations. So that's basic stuff. Fine. Let's actually graph a couple of these things. So here's how we're going to do this. I'm going to give you a function, and the first thing you're going to do is create a parent function table. So if this is a power of 2, 2 to the x, I'm going to make a table for 2 to the x. And I'm going to use the same values every time. We'll do negative 1 to 3. And 2 to the first is 2. We're doubling it every time. 1 half. One fourth. Wait, no. I'm cutting it in half. Half of two is one. Duh. This is one half. Because two to the negative first is one half. So we've got this, and that is my parent function. What I'm going to do now is use what we know about translations to change this table. So if you see an x minus three on the inside, remember that makes the function go to the right three. Well, if you go to the right three, take these x values. And go to the right, add 3. Negative 1 plus 3 is 2. 0 plus 3 is 3. 1 plus 3 is 4. 2 plus 3 is 5. 3 plus 3 is 6. Cool. Here, this also moves it down 3. The minus 3 moves it down 3. So going down 3, 
1 half minus 3, I'll say negative 2.5. 1 minus 3 is negative 2. 2 minus 3 is negative 1. 4 minus 3 is 1. 8 minus 3 is 5. So what I've done is I took a parent function and used what I know about translations to move the whole thing. And now this is what I'm actually trying to graph. This is my function f of x. So let's see how this looks. 2 is at negative 2 and a half. 3 is at negative 2. 4 is at negative 1. 5 is at 1, and 6 is at 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Cool. And since this thing has been moved down 3 units, the asymptote will get moved down 3 units to be at negative 3. And here's my graph. The domain will always be all real numbers for exponentials. The range will be the vertical or the horizontal asymptote to infinity if it opens up. And the asymptote will be at negative 3. That's your vertical shift. You create a parent function, and then you move it. Let's try another one. This is a one-half power, so I'm going to make a table for one-half to the x. And this can be kind of tricky. I'm actually going to go the other way. I'm going to do negative 8. Uh, no, I'm going to do... I don't want to do this. Let's do negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1. I'm going this way because one-half to the negative third is the same as two to the thirds in, top, in the top, which is... 8. And once I've got that, I can just follow the pattern. It's 1 half every time. So 4, 2, 1, 1 half. That's the parent function for 1 half to the x. 1 half to the first is 1. 1 half to the 0, or 1, 1 half to the first is 1 half. 1 half to the 0 is 1. 1 half to the negative 1 is 2. Because this would be 1 over 2 to the negative first, which is 2. That's what's going on here. Now we got to use our shifts. So this thing says go left 3 and down 2. x plus 3 makes it go left 3. So if I'm at negative 3, I'll go negative 6, negative 5, negative 4, negative 3, negative 2. Subtract 3 from the x's. Subtract 2 from the y's. 6, 2, 0, negative 1, 1 half minus 2 is negative 1.5. Let's see how it looks. Negative 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. There you go. There's negative 6, 6. Negative 5 is at 2. Negative 4 is 0. Negative 3 is at negative 1. And negative 2 is at negative 1 and a half. If it's a vertical shift of down 2, then the asymptote will be at negative 2. So here's my graph. And when I draw it, oh, you see all of this time. It's going to look like this. And then it's going to level off on the asymptote. So that is the graph of my function. The domain is all real numbers. The range is the horizontal asymptote, which is negative 2, and it goes up, so to infinity, and that's y equals negative 2, because it was a vertical shift of down 2. Let's do one more. This is a power of 3. So for 3, I'm going to uh, do, let's see, I think I might need to change this, negative 2, negative 1, 1. I'm not going to be able to do much more than that. Here's why. 3 squared is 9, 3 to the third is 27, that's going to be off the page. We are multiplying by 3 every time, so going the other way, oops, three, 9 divided by 3 is 3, 3 divided by 3 is 1, then 1 third, and then 1 ninth. 3 to the negative second is 1 over 3 to the second, which is 1 ninth. Okay. These tables are going to be the same every time, because I'm, I'm only going to give you positive 2, positive one half, positive three, positive one third. Those are going to be the only choices you have for these. So once you get the hang of these parent functions, you won't have to think too much because they're going to be the same every time. But I do need to now go right one and up one. So I'm going to add one to everything in this table. Right one, negative one, zero, one, two, three. Up one, this would be one and one ninth, which is 1.1 repeating. One and one third, two, four, ten. So I'll draw my asymptote at 1 because I know it's a vertical shift of 1. And then I'll start to plot my points. So negative 1 is at 1.1. 0 is at 1.3. So you can see it's starting off slow. 1 is at 2. 2 is at 4. And then 3 is at 9. Or no, 3 is at 10. Okay. It is got an asymptote here. So it's going to look something like that. That's terrible. Do better. Do better. 
Yeah. Hey, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. Okay. Domain is still all real numbers. Negative infinity to infinity. The range will be one. Oops. One to infinity. This is y equals one. One to infinity because the smallest y value is one and it goes up to infinity. So that's it for graphing your basic exponential functions. You need to be able to do this because we're going to flip the table and then we'll be able to graph logs as well. So this is going to be a really important skill. It's a little bit of mental math. That's okay. We can handle it. Okay. So just hit that like and subscribe button and that's all I got.